Okay guys, this is my first video. It's, it's gonna be a session on World War II. So what is World War II? World War II is a war, obviously, involving many of the, the world's leading nations. It was started because of a couple of reasons. The first one, nationalism. Now, we see nationalism in World War I, and it's accented in World War II. Nationalism is a strong belief in one's nation's pride and supremacy. That's one reason. So first, nationalism. I'm just going like, to write this down so I know what I covered because sometimes it's hard to remember. Okay. Nationalism. You see it? Yep. Nationalism. Oops. Okay. And after nationalism, we have militarism. Again, uh, one more common theme we see in World War I. Militarism is the belief that arms and a nation's military is essential to the might of that nation. Another is, and many of you know this, racism. Racism is the belief that one's race is better than every other race and has an obligation to impact other races usually in a bad way so those are the three main causes of course there are like other causes such as the great depression hit and germany was trying to revitalize its economy and all that but these are the three main reasons nationalism militarism and racism so keep that in mind guys all right so, now before we can talk about World War II, and actually I will make this video in sections because World War II is such a big deal. Sorry. Before we talk about World War II, we must talk about the roots of World War II. And this is agreed upon by many historians. The roots of World War II is the Treaty of Versailles, which was signed at the end of World War I. Now, as you may know, and I will upload more videos regarding World War I later, but for now, let's just agree upon this. The Treaty of Versailles is a treaty signed at the end of World War I to end all wars. And I'm putting it in quotations for that reason, because it really didn't, and we see evidence of it failing in World War II. So the Treaty of Versailles. The Treaty of Versailles had many clauses. It actually had 480 articles or paragraphs or whatever you want to call it. But it basically oppressed Germany. Italy didn't gain anything from it. It oppressed Germany. Italy didn't gain anything from it. Russia was totally out of it because it left the war because of the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk that it signed with Germany, which basically stated that it would be out of the war and the Allies would carry off on their own. So the Treaty of Versailles oppressed Germany. A main thing was the guilt clause and reparations. That's a very important word, reparations. Reparations is the payment of money cash obviously money cash to nations based on an agreement so for example germany had to pay back billions upon billions of dollars or marks whichever one you want to use marks is the german currency dollars is the usa currency so it had to pay billions upon billions of dollars for causing World War One, and that again is in quotes because as I said Germany didn't really cause World War One, but they needed in a way a scapegoat and understandably on the French and British side they had to make someone pay for their damages because World War One was very expensive in terms of personnel monetary and land land in the sense that a lot of land got burnt because of warfare, trench warfare, trenches were dug, farms were destroyed and all that. So 
back to where I was going, World War One and the Treaty of Versailles specifically is the cause for World War Two. Now, you might ask, how is a treaty the cause for World War Two? Well, the reason that Mussolini, the Italian fascist dictator, and guys, I will make a video just on the rise of the dictators because I believe it's a very important topic. And it's often ignored in school and everything, but in order to understand real World War One, sorry, World War Two, scratch that, yeah, World War Two, you need to understand how these people came in power, what were their ideals, and why people listen to them. Okay, so Mussolini told his people, the Italian people, look guys, we gain nothing out of the Treaty of Versailles, even though we fought as much as England, France, and Russia. Well, Russia was another case, but as much as England and France. And Mussolini was like, we got nothing, we should get something. So the Italian people were like, yeah, of course, we should have got part of Austria. So he instituted a fascist government and he took over Ethiopia because he wanted more power for it, Italy. And actually part of the reason why he was so successful is because he promised to lead the Italians back into the power of ancient Rome. Because he said at one time we Italians were the best in the world and why should we be otherwise? Here we see racism. The belief that the Italian race is the best. Militarism is shown in the case of Italy in the way they invade Ethiopia. Nationalism is shown because, once again, nationalism and racism are very closely intertwined, but they're not the same thing. So don't confuse them. Nationalism is evident in the way that, it, that Mussolini believed that he had an like intrinsic obligation to force his beliefs on other nations now the big guy as many people call him not really not many people call him that but yeah the big guy Adolf Hitler how did Adolf Hitler contribute to World War II well Adolf Hitler a very scary individual as we all know he killed many Jews and the Holocaust, he caused the Holocaust in which he called the final solution to the Jewish problem when, I don't know what he was thinking, but whatever he did. So Adolf Hitler said that Germany was being oppressed by the Allies because of the Treaty of Versailles. I mean, honestly, Germany was being oppressed because Germany had to pay billions upon billions of marks to France, England, and to some part America. And the guilt clause Hitler specifically said why should I as a soldier have to suffer for something that my government did and many Germans sided with him because they were like why should we have to suffer why should we have to be on the streets without food and they side with him and it is evident of these three things that influenced um, Hitler's agenda. Nationalism. Germany has a right to become the best. I actually have his book here. Mein Kampf. Uh, it's a terrible book. Don't read it. Very bad stuff. And it's very poorly written. But I thought it would be really interesting to read what he wanted people to know. And it's actually very shocking. Don't read it. It's filled with racism and baseless hatred. I don't know. But yeah. Back, I am digressing now. Militarism. Germany has a responsibility to become the best by way of its military. Racism, obviously, against the Jewish people. The Jewish people were blamed for the depression in Germany. Why? I don't know. Hitler found a scapegoat. Many people say that it was because his professor who rejected him at Vienna was Jewish, but... That's all speculation, I guess, and so Hitler felt hatred towards that. So those are the root causes of World War II. Of course, we have Tojo, who is another militaristic, nationalistic Japanese general who wanted to control the Pacific and believed 
that Japan should expand into China and Manchuria, sorry, Manchuria, Angkor, Angkor Wat, even that's a temple, I don't know why I said that, but Khmer, Cambodia, Indochina, the British, excuse me, British Malay. So we have Tocha. So these main people were the root cause of World War II. And, and to some extent, they are the sole cause to World War II. So, so let's just reiterate what was discussed in this video, or discussion, whatever you guys want to call it. The three causes for World War III, two, nationalism, militarism, and racism. The three people responsible for World War II, Benito Mussolini, Italy, Adolf Hitler, Germany, and Tojo, Japan. And World War II was very crushing on the world because it caused a lot of damage. And this is the first war in where more civilians died than soldiers. And this is very sad because civilians don't really deserve it, but they died. And, um, yeah, in my next video, I will talk about um, the rise of European and Asian dictators, which I believe is very important. And I hope you guys learned a lot from this video. And an ending note, I just wanted to create this channel because in school, a lot of people don't really learn much because their teachers rush, time constraints and all that. And oftentimes, I have experienced this because I take AP US history, right? My teacher rushes through slides sometimes and like it's like understandable because there's not that much time. So I have to study from a book and it oftentimes gets very hard. And I believe that it's always better if like someone is explaining it to me. So I'm trying to do that with you guys and hopefully that will help you for tests, quizzes and in general if, if like anybody just wants to learn history, I mean history is the first subject it is thought even from an early age because it's culture and i believe it defines us as humans and um okay guys that's it thank you for watching and i hope you learned a lot please comment rate and subscribe and what else what sorry whatever else you guys want to do and and message me if you have any questions i'll try my best to reply and that's it have a nice day.